This is Hans Adams and Lon Hinckley presenting our clinical entity, sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is an inherited chronic hemolytic blood disorder that expresses itself in autosomal recessive patients. These blood cells that contain the hemoglobin S turn into a sickle cell shape under low oxygen conditions. As a result, tissues receive less oxygen and also capillaries tend to get clogged due to the sickle cell shape of the red blood cells. The body responds to this by trying to destroy the abnormal red blood cells and it also tries to compensate for this loss by increasing red blood cell production which is seen through the bone marrow hyperplasia. Pain episodes occur when the malformed sickle cells occlude small vessels like capillaries. This prevents the areas from receiving adequate oxygen. This, this hypoxic state is known as a sickle cell crisis. Patients may complain of abdominal, muscle, and joint pain, as well as fever, malaise, and dyspnea. These patients also often present with heart murmurs and or enlarged hearts. Other symptoms related to heart attack, stroke, ischemia, and hemorrhagic events may also be present. Clinical signs of patients with sickle cell anemia include, but are not limited to, mucosal and skin pallor, and yellow tissue coloration, which is shown in the image on the top right. Some patients may also show delayed tooth eruption, abnormal enamel and dentin mineralization, malocclusion, or even hypercementosis. Another symptom may be periodontitis, which is shown in the image on the bottom right. And some pa patients may also show jaundice. According to the CDC and this handy map, sickle cell anemia is most commonly seen in Sub-Saharan Africa, South America, the Caribbean, Central America, Saudi Arabia, India, Turkey, Greece, and Italy. This blood disease manifests mainly in children and adolescents. In homozygous recessive individuals, death usually occurs by 40 years of age. In the U.S., 1 in 500 African American children has sickle cell anemia. Currently, it affects 90 to 100,000 Americans. Radiographic findings evident in patients with sickle cell anemia have a location that's generalized throughout the maxilla, mandible, skull, vertebrae, and long bones. Both edge and shape are not well defined, but one unique feature of sickle cell anemia is a hair on end appearance that radiates from the skull. Internal structures include mixed radiopaque and radiolucent lesions, as well as possible localized radiopacities. Other structures include thinning of the cortical plate and trabecular bone and widening of the diploic space, which is another unique feature. Typically, there are multiple lesions in patients with sickle cell anemia, and they can be found throughout the skull, maxilla, and mandible. This sickle cell anemia patient shows a widened diploic space due to the bone marrow hyperplasia. Another patient shown here also has a widened diploic space and a hair on end appearance which is evident around the skull. This case scenario shows a localized radiolucent area caused by a bone infarction. These radiolucent areas will be replaced by radio opacities after a bone is repaired. A thinning of the inferior border of the mandible may also be seen. And in periapical radiographs, a thickening of the lamina dura, loss of bone height, and a coarse trabecular pattern with increased medullary spaces may also be seen. Differential diagnoses of sickle cell anemia include thalassemia, osteoporosis, and osteomyelitis. Thalassemia is a hereditary disease which causes abnormal synthesis of hemoglobin. Similar radiographic features include hyperplasia of the bone marrow, generalized radiolucencies, thinning of the cortical bone, and a hair on end radiolucent appearance of the skull. The localized radiopaque areas seen in sickle cell anemia are absent in thalassemia. This can be used to differentiate the two diseases. Our second differential diagnosis, osteoporosis, is a decrease in bone density due to the reduced activity of osteoblasts. Radiographic features of this disease include decreased trabeculation and thinning of the lamina dura. However, patients do not exhibit 
areas of sclerotic bone healing which are manifested in patients with sickle cell anemia. Osteomyelitis is chronic or acute inflammation of the bone and or bone marrow, most often secondary to a bacterial infection. It presents as radiolucent lesions which are also seen in sickle cell anemia. However, in osteomyelitis, they are most often localized in the posterior mandible, while in sickle cell anemia, it is generalized throughout the jaws and skull. When making a final diagnosis of sickle cell anemia, one needs to look for some of the typical features, including generalized radiolucency in the mandible, a decrease or coarse trabecular pattern, a thinning of the inferior border of the mandible, or localized radiopacities. In addition, a hair on end appearance of the skull or widened diploic space are also common. Sickle cell anemia is a hereditary disease and cannot be cured. Yet there are preferred options to help manage the effects of this disease when providing dental care. Before treatment, consult the patient's physician for a prophylaxis regimen. During care, low oxygenation of the blood is the major concern. Therefore, local anesthetic is preferred compared to general anesthetic. Also, administration of oxygen with or without nitrous oxide can be used. In general, the best treatment is no treatment, so preventative care like in-home fluoride therapy and routine dental recall visits is highly recommended. During a sickle cell crisis, all treatment should be suspended unless it is for emergency care to reduce infection or pain. General stress reducing protocol can reduce incidence of complications and use acetaminophen for pain as ciliosylates may induce acidosis. To summarize, sickle cell anemia is a hereditary blood disorder which manifests itself not only in blood vessels but in the bones of patients. When examining a patient, physicians may see mucosal pallor, dentin or enamel hypomineralization or radiographically may see a generalized radiolucency of the bone or localized radiopacities or even thinning of the inferior border of the mandible. When treating a patient with sickle cell anemia, it would be wise for a physician to encourage preventative care through methods such as fluoride treatment and to avoid elective care if possible. It would also be good to encourage your patient to make routine dental visits. This concludes our presentation of sickle cell anemia. Thank you. Gracias. Tomo arigato. Kamsa hamnida. Dankeschön. Merci.